What is up, players? It's Warboss Tail up in this mug. The Frang. So, welcome to my How to Paint a Quartermaster, Russ Gray of the Death Corps of Krieg. And we are just blasting into it right now. Mornfang Brown is our third color. Storm Vermin Fur. These are the colors that I'm using to paint up our Death Corps of Krieg Quartermaster. There he is. Quartermaster Dane, looking right at you, looking deep into your soul. Rackarth Flesh, and you, as you can tell, I just added the shades right before I started filming this clip. It's still nice and bright and shiny. Steel Legion Drab. And Dryad Bark. Corn Red. Uh, this isn't the Special Edition Quartermaster, Mephiston Red. This is the standard Quartermaster that comes with the Quartermaster and Retinue kit from Forge World. So this is the one who's pulling the last pistol out of the holster. Agrax Earthshade getting ready to execute an injured guardsman so that they can recover his equipment. Balthazar Gold and continue the good fight. So very grim, very dark. Abaddon Black. No mercy for these guys and uh, just a really awesome figure. So here we go! Step one, you want to shade your miniature. So I like to, or um, not shade, prime your miniature. So I primed my miniature with the fang. You can see there, that's what it looks like in um, in paint pot form. Dryad bark next. But what I did was I spray primed the miniature with gray, a gray primer. And once that was dry, I used the Games Workshop spray prime the fang to get that nice bluish color all over the place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting at the bigger surface areas of the miniature starting with the trousers. So like all of my Death Corps of Krieg infantrymen, I start with the tr uh, after getting the the first blue down, I get the the brown of the trousers down just to give it a little contrast in the color scheme. So Besides the trousers, you're also going to be painting the gloves on his hands right here. Oh, sorry for the, the focus there. This is the last video that I filmed at my previous uh, residence in Hawaii. I have since moved. Now I'm in California. Corn red next. And uh, the setup is, is quite different. So. Uh, Igor is gonna have to learn some new tricks with the camera in order to in order to do his job. Isn't that right, Igor? Daylight savings time is so confusing, Master. I've never had to deal with it before. Yeah, me neither. Brave new world we're stepping into. I, I didn't know this, but there's no you know there's no daylight savings time in Hawaii, but. It just hit like the other night, and um, yeah, it's amazing. Everybody's like, "Turn your, turn your clock back, turn your clock back. Don't forget, one hour." And I'm like, "What? What are you people talking about?" So I decided to go with the quartermaster to have the lining of his cloak or his, uh, yeah, I guess cloak, be uh, this deep dark red color. And uh, unfortunately for me, while I was painting just now. I thought that right behind his trousers was the inside of his his cloak, you know, the cloak liner, but it's not. It's his great great coat, and I'm like, don't. So I'm gonna have to go back over that with a blue blue color to bring it back because there you can see in the back where the fold of the the cloak kind of goes over, and then clearly revealing that that back part is his great coat. Even though I mean, when you look at it from straight on. You know, you, it's an honest mistake, anybody could make it. Alright, Russ Gray. So the beautiful thing when using the Fang as a, as a base coat primer is that when you're using Russ Gray, using a s simple straight vertical strokes like this really helps to um, get some good smooth even lines on it. So 
So nice even strokes and also using a wet palette is is just so such a huge help. Using a, a clamshell, plastic clamshell, putting a little bit of water at the bottom and then a strip of parchment paper is really gonna help you out in the long run. It makes the paint really easy to apply, goes on really smoothly, it doesn't clump clump up your paint, it's just perfect. So what we'll be doing is putting on some Mornfang Brown and the parts that are Mornfang Brown are the bottom of the boots as well as in the infantry guys you've got their uh, brown the, the pouches or the packs where they hold their breather units but for character models like this quartermaster here Mornfang Brown is going to be used just like on the belt later. I went back to the corn red you can see because I forgot to paint this part where the the cape folded over and I'm just looking at the model there Mornfang Brown is also going to be on the holster for the last pistol, as well as the belt. I'm really excited, you guys. Uh, I've, I mean, I'm kind of sad that this is the last video that I will have ever done in my old place, but uh, I am really looking forward to coming out with more content, more videos, having more time now to do uh, everything. On my channel, I'm just really, really excited for you know to to be in this new space and and doing doing the most that I can with my life. Everybody should, right? Isn't that the goal? Like make the most out of out of the life you have and and what you're given and everything. Oh, very zen, very spiritual. Okay, storm vermin fur. This is what is going to be the uh, boot covers right below the straps and above the bottom of the boots themselves. Storm vermin fur is a little bit light so um, it'll darken down nicely once the shade is on. Alright, next we'll be doing Pallid Witch Flesh. And this is going to go on the mask. Now, um, the difference between the quartermaster and the rest of the Death Corps of Krieg is that the quartermaster's mask is kind of in the shape of a skull, very similar to the grenadiers. The grenadiers also have uh, kind of like skull shaped helmets. Or rather uh, covers for the rebreather masks. So I like to do them in this kind of ivory bone color. Lead Belcher now for all of the silver parts. So the last pistol is almost all silver, so I'm gonna just paint the entire thing with Lead Belcher.
then the bottom of the breastplate there. All the way up the breastplate. And then at the top there are two skull clasps which are holding the uh, cape onto the breastplate. So those are going to be silver. Uh, just like all of the other Death Corps of Krieg, we're painting the rebreather tube. The, the tube that connects the mask to the breather unit. And the, um, the back, the little unit where it's attached to, we're painting that in lead belcher as well. So it's all going to be silver. Okay, Zandri Dust is the next color, and this is going to be the leg wrappings. And I'm making good use of the cork now that I'm using to hold the quartermaster tube by turning it so that I can get at the entire, like every angle of the model to make sure that the leg wrappings go all the way around. Okay, now as Andrew does, I'm painting onto a uh, layer onto the mask to give it a little bit of a yellowish tinge. If you like the more white, the kind of bone ivory color, then you can stay with the palette witch flesh though. It, it's really up to you. Okay, Abaddon Black, what we're doing now is I'm painting the back of the cape. I'm painting that in black. I apologize for the focus being so blurry. I didn't really notice how close I was holding holding the quartermaster to my face while I was painting it. Sorry because I don't have a, uh, a screen that I can look at to make sure that the model's in focus, so I have to actually look at the viewfinder on the back of my camera and uh, when I'm painting and doing everything I can lead belcher now to uh, get the paint down correctly then it's it's kinda tricky and then a lot of times what happens is I'm focusing so much on the model I, I don't really notice that it's going into uh, it's going to be a little bit blurry and yeah, unfortunately that's what happens. So what I'm doing now is I'm mixing the lead belcher and the Abaddon black so you get a dark iron kind of effect and I want to say it's about maybe two to three times as much black as lead belcher. So you don't want to see too much of that silver but you, 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 do, you do want it to be a little bit of a, a black color with that kind of silver metallic shine to it. Uh, you don't want it to be straight black, and you don't want it to be uh, too silvery. So there's a little bit of a, a balance you want to achieve. And that's kind of just my way of doing it, my recipe. And uh, you, you don't have to follow it, of course, if you don't want to. But I've I found that a little bit of trial and error and experimentation will find you the amount and the recipe that's right for you.
Okay, so the next color we're going with is Balthazar Gold to get all of the gold details colored in. And uh, these are going to be any kinds of like gold eagles or uh, any, any, any parts that you want to pop out from the silver. Uh, the great thing about using gold as a highlight or a spot color is that you're, you're really looking for the access part or what am I saying? The accent points that really will, will stand out for the model. So the crest on the front of the helmet there, I believe on the right, you know, it's on the left shoulder, pla shoulder plates. He's got a little bit of a double-headed eagle right there that we're painting on now. So there's not too much that we want to do. I was thinking of painting the skulls that are the clasps for the uh, breastplate, but decided not to. He does have that little golden skull badge right there on the collar, so we're painting that in. And for now, we're also painting the eagle on the holster. Although later, the thing is, when I what I didn't realize was that I was just going for all the eagles, right? Paint all the eagles. So the the eagle right there on the the front of the breastplate. Um, I, I didn't really think about it, but the Mornfang Brown is such a close color to the Balthazar Gold that Zandri does next, that um, I'm, I've decided to change it to a silver color, just so that it'll pop off the holster a little bit better. So now what we're doing is we're going to color in the bone of the breastplate. So the fluff of the quartermaster is that if you see him coming, then it is pretty much bad news bears for you. If you are wounded, even if you've got like a sprained, you, you sprained your toe while you were charging out of the trench and you've got a little bit of a limp, uh oh, here comes this visage of death, the, the skull mask, the uh, rib cage, the breastplate, he's coming towards you and he's got his servitors behind him holding all these extra uniforms, it's, it's bad times for you because it's their job to go around the battlefield and uh, collect uniforms and equipment and distribute them, redistribute them uh, so to, to able-bodied Rackard Flesh next, to able-bodied soldiers who are about to join the fight that need the equipment. So they're so grimdark because they're, they're supposed to be like uh, apothecaries or medics they, they kind of use those same rules except that in, they give you like feel no pain but what they're really doing is um, just kind of like making sure that you're not injured because the minute you show weakness or injury they're gonna execute you they're gonna take your stuff and give it to the next Joe Schmo coming in off the transport boat and like nobody wants that so you see the quartermaster coming and instead of it being a good thing like oh awesome the quartermaster's here uh no you do not want him looking your way because he has like carte blanche full permission and authority to to execute you in order to take your stuff if he thinks that you are unfit for duty even if that means you do not like you know you you sneezed because some dust got in your nose or whatever oh you're sick Shablamo! Executed, and he takes all your stuff. Okay, Rock Hard Flesh. I painted it on the nose, or on his mask. Mephiston Red now. This is the highlight color for the cape. So you'll notice, watch when I highlight, I'm kind of going at the angle that the cape is flowing. Instead of going like straight across or going from the top to the bottom, I'm kind of going at this diagonal because it kind of follows the natural flow of the cape, cloak, whatever it is, however, however you want to look at it. And um, it kind of draws the eye to, to, the, to follow the line of where the fold is. And again, we're just trying to follow that line. And for, for no, no other reason than because if you get a streak of paint, like if you, if you can see your breaststroke because your paint is on too thick, you didn't use your wet palette as well as you should have, 
then um, the streak is not going to show in an awkward place. It's going to look natural because it's following the line of the fabric. Of course, we don't want to see that. We want all of our paint to go on nice and smooth, but um, it's, it's that little bit of insurance that if, if we're able to use our paint strokes to follow the, the line of the fabric, then it will help to cover up any, any mistakes in the application of the paint. That's yeah, a bummer, man. So I moved to San Mateo and um, I went to the local game store, Gator Games, and fantastic store. Oh my gosh, they carry so much stuff. Models that I haven't even, like I remember it coming out. Um, like some stuff from, from Warhammer Fantasy, Storm of Magic, the fine cast, um, special figures, like the Albion's uh, a spell singer or whatever. But um, yeah, so, so obviously there's a community here and they, they sell like conversion bits from uh, Cromlech and secret weapons and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, this place is like a Mecca. Lead Belcher, next. Because even my old stores in Hawaii, none of them sold really a lot of these uh, conversion bits, like mechanical wings or orc World War I heads and stuff. Yeah, so you can see I'm just covering up the, the double-headed eagle here. But uh, unfortunately, when I asked the, the cashier, you know, oh, how, how's, the, how's the Warhammer and 40k community here? And Screamer Pink next for the wax seals. You know what she said was that uh, there is a community because people come into the store and buy stuff, but uh, the store is too small to host any games and they don't ever have any really, they don't have events except for maybe like in the summertime or, or, or for special occasions or stuff. There's no weekly gathering of uh, gamers like in my old, play what am I doing? Ah, why am I doing that? I don't know why I'm doing that. Why was I so frustrated? Corn Red. There's no weekly gathering for people to get together and like share tips or, or get their armies out. and uh, That's kind of something I'm going to really miss that I, that I had in Hawaii. Or just a, being able to go to the local game store and just bring all my stuff and hang out. Like the, the, It's obvious when I went in they were doing like a magic or like a Yu-Gi-Oh night kind of thing and um, I was just like not feeling it but we'll see hopefully I'll be able to get a hold of some of the people that play Warhammer here Agrax Earthshade is the last thing and um, get in touch with that community but yeah for for now I feel kind of like uh, Tom Hanks in Castaway and you know I've got Igor and Lewis and Commissar Bane and we're just kind of hanging out like twiddling our thumbs it's alright master we won't leave you Oh my gosh, Igor, how was, <laughs> how was the flight? You were in my, my carry-on the whole time. You and Commissar Bane and Lewis. It was a bit stuffy. It was a bit cramped. But, uh, you know, we made it. No broken pieces. Which is more than I can say for the death corps of Krieg infantry you had in the luggage. Uh, Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Later.